game on earth. But so far, Lady Luck has smiled on these six players. And at the end of the night, one of them will walk away with the lion's share of one and a half million dollars. Welcome to the inaugural event of the World Poker Tour. World Poker Tour is a series of international poker tournaments featuring some of the biggest games and the largest payouts on the planet. Tonight, we are in Las Vegas, where the incomparable Bellagio Hotel is hosting the first tournament of this year's World Poker Tour. You'll see the top poker players battling it out using strategy, psychology, bravery, and maybe a little luck for nearly one and a half million dollars in prize money. Each of the 146 players put up 10 grand, knowing that only six would survive to compete at the WPT final table and earn a place in poker history. Today's winner will also get an entry into the WPT championship to face off against the other 11 title holders for millions in prize money. And now, down to the WPT arena, where poker champion Mike Sexton and Hollywood home game sensation Vince Van Patten are standing by. Welcome to the debut of the World Poker Tour. We are in Las Vegas for the Five Diamond World Poker Classic at Bellagio. Vince, this is so exciting. How you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. You know, sure, I'd rather be at that final table playing for millions of dollars. But listen, I'm in Las Vegas and I'm even, so I'm doing just fine. Well, we have a sensational group of six finalists for you here today. What a great way to start the season on the World Poker Tour. We're playing No Limit Hold'em. Two cards down and five cards up for everyone to play, and you can lose it all in a single hand. Okay, we're starting out now with a $1,000 ante, three and $6,000 blind, shuffle up and deal. So let's give a rundown of where these guys stand at the start of a final table today. Our chip leader is Gus Hansen. He's aggressive as they come on the poker table, and he's got over a million dollars in chips to start with today, nearly twice as many as a second-place contender. Right, but the guy sitting in their second chip position is one of the hottest players on the tournament circuit today, Johnny Uwanda, and he's got 574,000. That is plenty of chips for a player of his caliber. Then there is Kasim Deeb with 562,000 in chips. Our next player is one of the poker greats, the 1998 world champion of poker, Scotty Wynn. The 409,000 in chips he's starting with today will give everyone else plenty to worry about. John Hennigan is a former professional pool player from Philadelphia. He has 205,000 in chips. And Chris Bigler is a retired businessman from Switzerland. He is our short stack with 136,000 in chips. This is really exciting, Vince, to get to see these players' cards because the viewers are going to get a nice insight on what these players are actually thinking. Let's take a look. Who's going to be the first winner of the final table on the World Poker Tour? And I look at Johnny Yawanda, only has a 4-6 offsuit, a junk hand, terrible hand. He's got to fold it. He does fold. John Hennigan next to speak. He fold. Now look at this. Scotty Wynn has a queen nine in the hearts. He sees the other guys folded. What's he going to do? Now look at this. The guy on the button in both blinds all have a better hand than Scotty. Scotty opens a pot for $22,000. Scotty Wynn, our world champion, is the first one to bet at the pot. The button folds. Deeb folds. And Bigler folds. Everyone folds. Scotty wins the first pot. Okay, well, Scotty Wynn picks up that first pot. When you pick up blinds and annies, Vince, that's 15000 more that goes in your stack. It adds up. Not too bad. Well, we're underway here. Scotty breaks out with a big grin. Uh, Vince, he captures the first pot. That's always a good feeling. Yeah, this player is so feared by all the other players. Scotty Wynn, great champion in poker, takes that first pot. I play to win, not lose, you know. I'm not going to put up no $10,000 just thinking about it. Scotty Wynn going to win it tomorrow, baby. No doubt about it. Scotty is the most experienced. He's probably won more poker tournaments than all the other players at the final table times four. For those of you that are new to the game, and for my pal Vince here, we've got a quick tutorial on how to play Texas Hold'em. See, I'm not new. I just don't win. The game is No Limit Hold'em, the Cadillac of poker. It's a game that takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then, five community cards, cards everyone can play, are placed face up on the table. Each player combines their two hidden down cards with the community cards to make their best five card poker hand. And betting is really what this game is all about. Let me explain. You get your first two cards, you make a bet. Then, the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. In poker, we call this the flop. They 
you bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card on the table. This is called the turn card. Once again, big round of betting. Then the last card. We call this the river. It's turned up on the table. They make a big last round of betting. Turn your cards over. You see who wins. They call it no limit hold'em because there's no limit on how much a player can bet. At any moment, he can declare that he is all in and push all of his chips into the pot. Right, and that makes chip position, or how many chips you have, very, very important in this game. Scotty gets off to a great start. It's always nice to get that first pot under your belt in a major championship. Okay, the button moves forward now. Chris Bigler is on the button. Now, the button, you're going to be hearing a lot about the button in this tournament, is that little white hockey puck that moves around the table each hand. It tells the dealer where to start dealing. And the two players to the left of the dealer button have force bets called blinds. The blinds make sure there is action and money in the pot on every hand. Now, you can see from that first hand, these guys are playing a little tight, a little conservative, just feeling each other out. Scott is going to take a peek at his hand, throws it away. And here comes Gus Hansen. He's got a queen eight offsuit and he raises the pot. 18,000 to go. He is the most aggressive player at the table, has been all week. Deeb folds. And Bigler folds. Hennigan folds. Everyone folds. Gus with spot. Gus, the youngest player at the table, picks up the pot. He senses everybody's going to play tight early. He's going to go ahead and try to pick up some blinds and annies. It really shows you how much psychology is involved in this game. And I'll tell you what else this shows. It shows that Kasim Deeb has drawn a bad seat in this tournament. He's sitting right behind Gus. Gus is going to beat him in the pot all the time. That means if Deeb wants to play pots, he's going to have to come back over the top of Gus. So, uh, quite frankly, I think Freddie's drawn a bad seat sitting behind Gus because Gus is always in there grabbing the pots first, and Freddie likes to be in there grabbing pots himself. You can win every hand with your gambling. You know, you're going to lose some hands. If you can't take it, if you, if you break down, I mean, you're going to just go. Okay, the button rotates around now. The first to speak this time will be Gus Hansen. Let's see if he's so aggressive in first position. Then. Gus has a jack through the club in this particular hand. He's not in good position, and you see he folds this hand. Just chucked it. Deeb folds his hand. Chris Bigler, 5-9 off suit. Bigler folds his hand. Now here's John Yuanda on the button with a king jack off suit. Yeah, he's in a very good position. He has that, what we call that button in front of him. That's a perfect time to raise because the guy's on your right already folded. And he does so. And John Hennigan folds his hand. Now look at Scotty win. Now Scotty's picked up the queen eight of diamonds. Not much of a hand here. What's he doing, Mike? John Yuan is a pretty solid player, so I'd be sort of surprised Scotty's thinking about playing this hand, but it sure looks like he is. Sometimes you don't want to be pushed around. Scotty calls. He does call, and bet you're right. Scotty's making a statement here. You just can't raise and take it on the button with me. Flop comes five, nine, ten, two clubs. Now, this means both players have flopped a gut shot straight draw. Scotty has a queen eight where a jack would make him a straight, and Yuanda has a king jack where a queen would make him a straight. So Yuanda has the best hand here. Check. Scotty checks. They both check. It goes check, check on the flop. Turn cards at another ten, two tens on board. Let's see if anybody bets at this pot now. They both checked. John, you want to check behind him one more time. River cards are seven. Now, in my opinion, for Scotty to win this pot, he must bet here. If he doesn't bet here, he's just giving the pot up. Check. He checks. He doesn't. He check. checks. Check. Check. He checks. Queen high. He wanted to win the pot with king high. I think Scotty made a mistake. I think he should have bet the river card there if he wanted to win that pot at all. Right now, I don't think he's too pleased with himself. Yuanda's feeling very good about that right now. He picks up $57,000 in that pot because Scotty checked to him. I can tell you right now, Scotty Wynn is not happy with himself. He knows he should have bet that hand at the river. He knows he made a mistake. Here we go to the next hand. The action is on Kasim Deeb. He looks at a 10 deuce. He's seen throwing away a junk hand, bad position. Chris Bigger with a 6-9 offsuit folds his hand, and John Yuanda folds a 3 and an 8. And Henningen folds. Now we're down to the battle of the blinds, and Scotty picks up an ace high here. Now both these players had to put money in before the hand started. That's what we call the blinds. Scotty just limped in in the small blind. And now Gus Hansen with king high, he does raise. He raises it at 18,000. Scotty calls. It's entering. Most players would raise in a small blind with an ace, and Scotty just limped in and then called a raise. And here comes a flop. Flop comes 10, Trey, Trey with two spades. Check. Scotty checks. Scotty checks in the small blind. 
And here comes Gus. He's betting 24,000, as he should. He just has a king high, but because he raised early, this is the hand you should bet after the flop if you raise pre-flop. Scotty's calling. That's an interesting call. Scotty, I actually believe Scotty thinks his ace high is the best hand. This Another is a great ten, call by Scotty on the flop. Another 10. Two 10s, two trays on board. And now the board pairs 10s. <laughs> so it's 10s and 3s. Now this didn't actually hurt Scotty's hand because he has an ace high. Had Gus had a 10 or a 3 or a pair already, Scotty would have been beat. He checked. And Scotty called a re-raise. He called a bet on the flop. Your king high is starting check. to shrink in your mind here, Vince. Check, check. And he checks. Eight of spades, three spades now. Now an eight comes off and it's another spade. Check. Scotty checks. It's up to Hanson. I believe if Hanson bets his hand, Scotty's going to call him. Scotty's got an ace. He checked also. Scotty's got an ace. Nope. Looks like Scotty's going to win the hand with tens and trays nope. ace high. Scotty turns over the ace. He wins this pot. Wow, that was quite a call by Scotty on the flop, Vince, I'll tell you. He felt the ace was the best hand. He called on the flop when it come 10-3-3. He ends up winning this pot with ace high, and he's also sent a message to Gus. You're just not going to run all over the game. We are in the thick of it, Mike. We're going to take a break in the action. You are watching the World Poker Tour. From Hollywood, Costa Rica, Aruba, and San Francisco. The finest poker from around the world. More to come on the World Poker Tour. It's fun!